Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how to contribute to the Flutter repository as a beginner. So I assume that you guys are Flutter beginners learning Flutter and you think that mm, I should actually you know, contribute to the Flutter repository or the GitHub or whatever they have, right? And you might think that, oh no, I am a Flutter beginner, I don't know anything on how to contribute i probably need like 10 years of experience to contribute to the flutter github well fret not you actually don't have to be very very experienced to contribute to the flutter github repository because github itself github itself but flutter repository itself has a lot of projects that you can contribute to so I read this article by Ayush Burwani, if I pronounce your name correctly. It's called Contributing to Flutter, Getting Started. So this is a really good article if you really want to, you know, like try out to contribute to the Flutter repository. So he himself has contributed so far and why you should care about open source contributions. First of all, I think this is a very good one if you are, a, you know, a newbie developer and you want some mentoring. So mentoring, how to get it for free? You usually have to add value. So you can get free mentors by adding value to the Flutter repository by contributing to the open source library. So for example, you have like, a, you open up an issue and then people, you know, actual real developers in Google or the Flutter team will actually give out comments about your contribution or your comments or your issues and whatsoever. So you won't have this kind of mentoring if you were to do it alone or if you sometimes are in a company and you don't have like mentors to see your code and such. So this is a really good place for you to find mentors on about your Flutter code. So the second thing is you will learn something new. Rather than just building UI widgets, you will also learn how the widgets have been built so far and how much of assertions and a lot of use cases that they have catch inside the source code. And lastly, you will impact the community. So your contribution will actually help beginners or Flutter developers who are trying to build their apps and this will actually improve their development experience. So like I said earlier, you think that you should be a pro to land a pull request or PR. So some of you might not even have tried pulling request before. So this is a great opportunity for you to do so. And there are tons of active maintainers out there to help you. So sometimes when you go to an open source project and then you want to, you know, have an issue, sometimes they don't reply. Usually those big projects under by a big company has very, very active maintainers. So the next point of this article is myth number one, open source contribution is hard. So open source contribution doesn't mean that you have to solve those very, very hard issues. You can definitely improve on the existing documentation. Also, just do a feature request. So for example, there is an issue inside the Flutter repository that says add mouse cursor support to the remaining widgets. So this person, I assume he's a Flutter developer or Flutter maintainer. He has some suggestion on the different material widgets to be clickable in your Flutter web project. So I was actually doing a Flutter web project using a material card and then I chanced upon this issue and I just commented whether a material card widget is visible for mouse cursor support. And the thing is, he replied, that's probably a good idea. So the thing is that I didn't even have to write code just by contributing or asking question whether a certain widget is clickable or not actually contributes to the open source. So you don't have to actually put in the code. You can just, you know, suggest different widgets, for example, like inside Flutter Web, suggest different widgets, why is that so? And also at the same time, your opinion matters. So if you were to scroll down there is another person to say whether the GT or gesture detector should be clickable and then there is a discussion about it and such and such. So that's the thing about being open source. You don't have to actually code out the implementation. You can just you know have to ask suggestions and contribute like so. So the next thing is writing documentation and creating issues are not open source contributions. So that's the thing, you don't have to code out the solution to a issue. You can always open up an issue to say, oh, this documentation is not exactly great. What about this way of documenting? So for example, for me, I have an issue about 
text widget to change its color and font size without using text style. So what I mean by that is, so for example, if you were learning Flutter and you were learning how to create a container, usually when you want to change a color, you will probably write this code. However, there's also this kind of implementation. So in my opinion and experience, you could see that when you want to change a color in a text, you have to have an additional object for you to actually change a property of your text. For example, a very simple color. However, container, there is this implementation, but there's also another implementation that's easier. So my proposal is that instead of having a text style to change our simple colors and even our font size, which I believe is the most commonly used parameters in the text widget, why not we should have this kind of parameters. I believe this is not like a breaking change, but I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. So the thing is, I just give an idea and if they think this is good, then someone else, maybe the Flutter team or myself or you guys out there can try to implement this kind of change. So the first thing when you want to contribute to the open source project or to the Flutter repository is to open an issue to see whether this issue is actually valid. You don't have to actually create a pull request because pull request means that there's an issue that you want to solve and then after that you want to use this pull request to resolve it. So always open up an issue. So once there's an issue that the Flutter team thinks is valid and other people also think that this should be an implementation that I think I highly recommend for beginners out there to learn Flutter, link in the description link in the description so you put a thumbs up so that people can see. So one tip, don't open pull requests without an issue. Always open up an issue first and then do a pull request once the issue is actually validated and people seem to think that this issue is worth solving. So you can definitely change the documentation, open up an issue saying that, okay, this documentation doesn't make sense. How about this documentation? So once the Flutter team thinks it's okay, once people think this is a valid change, then you can do a pull request and then do the whole thing. So how can you contribute to Flutter? So I personally haven't contributed in terms of doing a pull request in Flutter. So these are the different steps that I usually have pointed out. So the first step is to select a repository from the Flutter organization. They have a lot. So choose one. It can be the main Flutter framework or it can be, you know, the Flutter gallery or the Flutter website. And then step two, find issues. So there is issue that's called easy fix. So you can go to the Flutter GitHub repository under the issue tab and then click this label over here and this will open up a drop down and then you can type in for example easy fix. So this will have all of the issues that have the tag or label easy fix. Click on it and this will open up all of the easy fix issue that is open. Another label that you can do is good first contribution if you click on it. And then you could see all of the good first contribution label on the different issues. So certain issues are deprecated because it's uh, been years since the issue has opened. But this is a good base for you to, you know, contribute to the Flutter repository. Now the next step is to talk to the maintainers if you're not sure on how to solve it. You can comment on the issue and take some leads from the people commenting on an issue. So if you're not sure, you can join the Flutter project Discord server, which I just did it. And check out their different channels to see what their purpose is. So don't be hesitant to ask for help. So lastly, this is where you're going to implement your change. So you're going to fork the repository and clone it and do the changes to fix the issue. So once you have the issue, you might have to write a test to ensure that your changes are solid, not breaking anything. So that means you can improve on your testing skills inside Flutter. And then if you want to do a breaking change, you probably have to write a design document to propose a breaking change before creating a pull request. All right, so there's a lot of things you have to check on. And once you do a pull request, you just will have to wait for the reviews and work on it. And the LGTM, the word LGTM is like the God and Savior to say that, oh my God, my work is validated. But the thing is, don't get demotivated if your PR gets closed. That means that it is rejected. And most of the time, your pull request will get rejected if you are doing the first few times. But don't worry, this is a very good experience because if you haven't got your pull request closed, you're not a developer, just kidding. But the thing is that having a pull request being rejected, it is a shitty feeling, 
but it's a feeling that you have to get over it and then just move on and try your best to resolve what is needed to be done. So it's very important for you to discuss on the issue whether it is really, really high priority or not because Flutter has a lot of issues and most of the time I believe is that they are trying to find people to you know triage or actually filter out the different issues on the issues inside Flutter because there's a lot of issues sometimes it's a lot of people asking why these certain things happen here and there you can definitely contribute by triaging right so there is a documentation for contributing all right, so some tips for you to start. Don't send a PR without creating an issue. Please don't because that doesn't make sense at all. Don't solve an issue that doesn't need to be solved, right? So that's pretty simple. Next, read the contributing guide or ask for TLDR from someone, all right? Sometimes the documentation is not enough. You have to ask someone. Something that I didn't know was don't use Dart FMT inside your Flutter repository when you want to do your PR because the Dart FMT takes a lot of lines of code so that's something I didn't know. There are some things that I use that he have thought out. One PR for one fix no matter how small the fix is. Consider if you land three changes in the single PR for some reason maintainers need to revert one change your other two changes will also get reverted. So this is something that I think is very very useful not only inside the open source community but also internally if you were building a product in terms of having pull requests. So I think having one pull request for one fix is very, very useful when you want to do it not only inside open source contribution, but also closed source, meaning your work. All right. So sometimes you have a PR that's huge. Uh, that's that's bad. Yeah. So the next thing is be open and have healthy conversations. The people on the Flutter team are not out there to kill you on your pull request. They are trying to follow a certain standard or procedure because this will really help them in their job. So have a healthy conversation and ask why certain things here and there. So for me, for example, I ask what's the reason if not for the better readability and ease of understanding for new developers for this kind of implementation. If this is not the reason, I want to know why is that so because I want to understand why they have this implementation rather than this implementation out from the get-go. And don't forget to follow up on reviews. Sometimes it takes weeks for PR, have patience and trust the process. So yeah, don't expect a lot of things. The Flutter team, the maintainers, people contributing are busy people, right? So be patient if your PR has not been merged or your comments have not been replied. Chill, man, chill. They have a lot of things on their plate. So that's it for this video. Are you hyped in contributing to the Flutter repository? I hope you are because a lot of small efforts is better than one big effort because it is a community. An open source project is a community project. So try out your first issue on the Flutter repository or any other repository like Dotpad or Flutter Web and such. So that's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below and comment down on your issue that you have been waiting for to be resolved. That's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye. Bye.